The text for the message this morning is the Old Testament reading in the Second Chronicles. Uh, I need verse 21 again, so let's uh, go through that. But they conspired against him, and by command of the king, they stoned him with stones in the court of the house of the Lord. This is our text. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wonder um, if you are as amazed by courage and acts of courage as I am. Uh, sometimes it takes your breath away what people do. Uh, if you ever have opportunity to talk to somebody that's won one of those uh, medals of valor that they have in the military, you'd know from them that uh, um, they, they never think about courage so much. They think about <laughs> fear, uh, and, but their act is of courage uh, because without fear, there is no need for courage. Uh, and, um, and it's all the more so when uh, you're in the middle of something that you have no idea how you're going to deal with and you just act. Uh, those guys kind of astonish everybody. Um, I, I, I'm saying that here because it, uh, you have Zechariah and Stephen that are sort of in the same boat here uh, and they have to do some things that are more than likely going to get them killed uh, and in fact in both cases that's what happens. Uh, but they stand in courage and face people that have power. Uh, this passage in Second Chronicles is a lot like what happened to Stephen. Anyone who tells the truth uh, to power is going to be at risk. That's just the way things go. Uh, Zechariah was stoned just like Stephen for, uh, in his case, telling the king he was uh, breaking with God's ways and that God had forsaken them uh, and for some reason that upset the king. You can hardly imagine that that would be so. Uh, and so they killed him for it. It's hard to hear uh, in the same way about personal sins. Uh, you know, when you say something about personal sins to a king, they, well, they don't really have to listen to you. Uh, and that's pretty much what Zechariah was talking about. And it wasn't only him, but his whole country, because they'd all wandered off to Asherim, which is... Uh, basically worshiping a tree. Uh, I don't understand why they did that, but apparently they did that in abundance. Uh, and, the, and so Zechariah was telling them that it was a problem. And uh, I think if you look at this carefully, uh, between he and Stephen both, they, they were not alone as they were doing this. They both were, uh, well, it says the Holy Spirit was in them. Uh, and, and this is about the only way you can stand in front of a king and have the Spirit of God that your courage is going to come out like this. Uh, he asked God to bear witness, Zechariah did, and to vindicate him, uh, which is a complicated sort of thing. Um, we're, we're all afraid sometimes. I can't imagine anybody saying that they've never been afraid. If they, they say that, then they're probably big fat liars. But uh, probably more than we're comfortable telling about in any case, sometimes we're just scared. Uh, different degrees of fear, I suppose, there are. And, and there are many causes, all different kinds of things. Uh, the worst kind of fear, though, is the one that threatens your mortality. Uh, it is uh, pretty horrible. But those are the ones that make you afraid to die, and, uh, and you will do very nearly anything to avoid that. Uh, I would suppose, you know, just in the way of examples, there are the really scary health threats for yourself. Uh, that's bad enough. Um, my my uh, daughter, I told, we prayed for her, that she had uh, a kind of cancer, and uh, that was upsetting to me because you know, I was worried for her mortality. You know, she's okay now, uh, but that was pretty horrible. That's fear. It's mortal fear. Uh, you can have a bad accident, and seeing that coming is usually pretty horrible, uh, and it's bad enough afterwards because you can get a little shocky. Uh, a bad fall, and all of you have seen those things in different people that you care about, if not for yourself. 
Um, any kind of physical threat from anywhere, and there's far too many of those. Uh, they're, they're all horrible, and they're all scary. So, what do you do? Uh, uh, not much you can do on those kind of things, but what do you do? Even bigger problem is when you have to speak for God, what do you do? Because, uh, you know, we've all kind of stood in that, in that spot uh, one time or another. These days, uh, around here, it may not uh, likely be a mortal problem, but it's still kind of scary because uh, I know um, for most of us, if you're faced with something and, and it seems to you that you need to say something about God's things, then you're worried about if you can say it right, if you're going to be effective. Uh, uh, you hope that you won't freeze standing in front of something that's difficult. Uh, and, and you have to say something that may offend people, which is, you know, difficult on its own, even if you do know what to say. So do you speak even without a mortal threat for God? Uh, uh, here we sit, it's Christmas time, we're a little thin here today because people are wandering doing stuff or they're just worn out from all the other stuff they did. Uh, you know that uh, sometimes people need to be reminded about what Christmas is, what it's for, and why it's important. And sometimes we don't want to talk about it because it's more interesting to look at Christmas trees and have dinner. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's fun too. It's easy to skip it and forget that Christ is Christmas and the things that are connected like that. Uh, and, and especially if all the stuff that's connected like that is a little scary to talk about uh, among your family because you all have family members that don't want to talk about it uh, and they just want to sit down and enjoy. So here we are being afraid and wondering whether we should speak. Zechariah and Stephen did when they knew it would quite likely get them killed. Uh, as I said, though, when Zechariah was sent out, he was clothed in the Spirit of God. That's what it says. This, to, to speak the hard things to his king. Uh, when Stephen spoke to his people about Christ in the flesh, in the world, about Jesus being born, about him living and dying and rising from the dead, uh, they were upset about that. All for your salvation. This has happened, though. He was filled with the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that's in you. Even as you sit here, even on this day, the same Holy Spirit that was in Zechariah, the prophet, and in Stephen, the, the deacon who was chosen by the twelve, uh, those guys had the same Holy Spirit, the exact same one that's in you. Even as he was being stoned to death, the Savior Jesus, Son of God, had been in the flesh of men. Which is a kind of a hard thing to sort out, but that's what we're here for. That's what Christmas is, is the Son of God in the flesh. Uh, Stephen died with his name still on his lips, which is kind of a stunning thing because that's what got him in trouble in the first place. But they, these, these men, they did not seek death. I mean, it may seem obvious that doing the thing that you know is going to get you killed is seeking death, but that's not what they were doing. They were not seeking death, but they were seeking Christ. They were putting forth Christ. Your Christ said, just like it's the same Holy Spirit, it's the same Christ who was born to you, who lived and died for you, who rose from the dead for you. It's the same one. It's the same one who came uh, at Christmas. And it's not about Mary. I mean, Merry Christmas. It's about Christ. <laughs> Christmas. It's about Christ. Life in Christ. Just as he was here. The same one who came at Christmas is the same one that has come to you. There's always been some suffering among his servants. That's not news. Uh, Jesus spoke about that kind of a lot. That, that you know, if you're with him, you're going to have the same problems that he had. Uh, you should expect that if you serve someone and they are persecuted, then there's a fair likelihood you're going to get that too. And it's been so. Uh, all of them have been 
persecuted to some degree, some more than others. I suppose you've all had little bits of that, but uh, it probably seems very slight compared to what these guys did. Uh, but Christ said, this is not news. This is not new. Uh, he was uh, in, the, in the gospel reading we heard from, from uh, Matthew today. He said that this has happened to everyone. Uh, and, and interestingly, he says from Abel to Zechariah. Which, you know, that's not the Greek alphabet and it's not the Hebrew alphabet. But for some reason, he went A to Z on this. I always found that kind of interesting. I think he was thinking of you. So he knew you would see that. <laughs> But all of them suffered because they were connected to their God. They were looking forward to their Messiah. Still, Zechariah and Stephen have been vindicated. They didn't die uh, for nothing. Uh, Zechariah was looking for vindication, and, and it has indeed happened. Their words were not their words, which we find out. That's why you know them, because you have found out. And like your confession of sin or your confession of faith, as we have done here today in Christ, uh, he was born to be crucified, which we know he did come in the flesh and he did bring salvation. And it has been his mission and it has all been for you. Zechariah wasn't working only for himself. He was working for his God. He was working for the people that he was caring for. And Stephen, likewise, was trying to bring the truth of Christ born, crucified, and risen. It's the same thing that is in your hands. It's the same thing that you know about. That's that what all of the prophets spoke about. Your words are God's. They're born of the Holy Spirit, and the world will hear and see the truth, just as you have been here and confessing your faith. Uh, and you, You've had communion in this place. You have been here celebrating the birth of your Christ, for these days, and the world sees, and some will come to Christ because of that. And all of this because uh, Zechariah and Stephen and you have been vindicated by what Christ has accomplished with you. Um, there's this word in here, uh, Stephen and Zechariah, countless others, I suppose, have been called martyrs. It's kind of a strange word to us. Uh, well, it's not English anyway, it's a Greek word. But uh, the, the, the word, we always think it just means somebody who died for some important purpose. Well, it, it doesn't mean that. Uh, martyr means witness, someone who testifies, someone who speaks. Uh, they're witnesses, and sometimes that's brutal and horrifying, but they spoke the truth for God, for Christ. And, and, uh, and many people have heard these words and come to Christ, and it vindicates all the words that came, because those words are not just words, they are words of power. They are words from the Holy Spirit that lives in you. They are words from God himself who reminds us constantly of his son and what he has done. And here we sit on this day celebrating his birth and celebrating of all the strange things, the people that have served him, maybe even tragically. Uh, and here we sit also testifying to the world that, that we love this same Christ, the one that was born to us, the one that was so humbly brought into the world that has essentially uh, taken over our lives having the Holy Spirit in us, it changes things. It changes what we say, it changes what we do, and that is vindication of Christ and all of the people that have served him. They have their rewards. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.